person with um, kind of mid-length black hair and um, wearing a pink t-shirt in a very messy room. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ella Brown. I'm the evidence researcher at the Audience Agency and will be speaking to you today as well. I'm a white female in her 30s with uh, medium length brown hair wearing a white top uh, and a white background. Cool. Um, so today's session is looking at visual arts audiences, but I thought it would be useful just to tee it up to say a little bit about the context of this. Um, it's looking at data from a couple of different sources, partly from uh, audience finder data uh, and partly from data from the cultural participation monitor. That you've probably heard me talk about uh, on other occasions or heard us talk about on other occasions. Um, but the first presentation by Ray is an illustration of some work we're doing in partnership with the University of Sheffield. Um, and so I thought it might be worth just a little bit to say um, sort of why it is we're working with academics in this way uh, and what we're doing and so forth. So very briefly, um, and Ray will say a little bit more about this as well. Um, so we do all sorts of different work with universities, whether that's sort of presenting on undergraduate courses or um, with the universities as clients or various other things. Um, we're obviously partners in the Centre for Cultural Value, um, so you know, working quite intensively um, the University of Leeds through that. Um, but really, uh, we're working with the University of Sheffield, it's about supporting a couple of PhD candidates, of which Ray is one, um, to use our data sets of various sorts to support their work. Um, and from our point of view, that A gets the, the data sets used and analysed in really interesting ways. We get to you know, the benefits of their learning and insights and you know, thoughts about it um, but we and, and also it, it contributes to spreading extra um, data um, cultural data skills in the sector which is obviously something that we value um, in a more general sense anyway um, so this would be a sort of if you like a first glimpse of that kind of work that we're doing but um, we are doing you know, more and more academic work um, and we'll talk more about that in more detail on other occasions but just to kind of Situate why why you're talking to or why why Ray's talking to you or vice versa. So Ray, do you want to go away? Cool, thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you for having me and thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, I've just prepared a very short presentation on a, a bit about me and a tiny bit of uh, research I've done with the audience agency. Um, so if I just go on to the next slide, the first slide. Um, Here's an introduction uh, to me and my research. So yeah, um, I'm particularly interested in um, art and culture and social inequality. Um, and I think a bit of that comes from my background. So um, yeah, I'm from like a small co coastal town uh, near Skegness. Um, and also for the last few years before I started the PhD, I was working as head of development at Sound and Music, which is an Arts Council England national portfolio organisation. Um, and also I sort of um, make music and play music a little bit on the side. So um, I think all these things made me interested in kind of art and culture and social inequality, especially because I'm from one of those places that's kind of traditionally talked about as uh, underserved community and um, so yeah it was a radicalizing moment for me and um, then since September of last year I've been on the CDT program which is Center for Doctoral Training Data Analytics and Society and um, which is basically just a master's and a PhD um, kind of integrated uh, the master's is social research and also kind of teaches you to do coding in like Python and R so it's all very quantitative data-based and uh, very cool um, for the next three years, as Oliver said, I'm going to be uh, carrying on working with the audience agency. So the output of the PhD will be um, like roughly three papers um, that we'll use um, maybe like lots of different data sets, but work working a lot with audience agency using their um, uh, very large data sets. Um, and I'll be hopefully like throughout the PhD, like sharing my findings. Like, I guess that's kind of the way that this program works. It's not just like squirreled away writing a PhD for ages it's about like kind of sharing it with the sector and um, and uh, I don't know exactly what it's going to be about which I think is very normal at this stage but the current title that I'm working with is exploring how people enjoy culture in the home 
Um, I've been reading about um, a lot of online engagement, but I kind of also want to look at um, telly because I watch a lot of telly and I feel like lots of people do. Um, and throughout this uh, presentation, I've put a few uh, pictures from John Smith's short films uh, to make it fun. And they're all on YouTube. Um, next slide, please. <laughs> Um, so for the internship project that I did, it was just a very small project that was like just a small master's module, essentially. Um, I went to the office um, of the audience agency in London and Manchester, which um, was really nice. Um, and we decided together to look at visual arts audiences um, compare and compare them with audiences for other art forms. Um, so this was a really good chance to get to grips with the audience finder data set, which um, probably lots of you will know, but just in case you don't, is um, I think like it, the data set I was looking at specifically is where people go to events and then uh, fill out um, surveys about like why they went and what their experience was like, et cetera. Um, so through consultation with uh, people in the audience agency, um, we decided to look at two things. So the first one was reported motivations for attending visual arts events. Um, so people basically get a question where it says, like tick all of these motivations that are important to you from ones that are yeah, kind of just stated for them. Um, and the second uh, thing we looked at was relationship between survey method and visitor rating. So after the events, um, people answer, how likely would you be to recommend this to a friend and also um, rate the quality of it? Um, and also they're asked that sometimes by e-survey and sometimes in face-to-face -face surveys. So it was just looking at, um, I guess, what the relationship between those things are and also from the visual arts and uh, non-visual arts angle. Um, so in the next slides, I'll just give a quick overview of my findings. Um, so this is the first area, um, how do motivations for attending visual arts events differ from other art forms? So the visualization that you see here, which um, I find hard to explain a little bit, essentially it represents like the percentage difference value for visual arts attendees compared with non-visual arts attendees. So I feel like the easiest way to explain it is like on the left, um, intellectual stimulation. Um, you get, that is about 15%. So essentially for people that were going to visual arts events, intellectual stimulation was reported like 15% more than for the wider data set. Um, so interestingly, um, we can see these like kind of outliers. So yeah, the, the most interesting, I guess, and striking outlier in this is entertainment on the right-hand side. So that yellow bar on the right, um, that was reported as 30% less than uh, for visual arts attendees as a, as a motivator than for the wider um, data set, which is quite striking. And I think if we dig into them like a little bit more, you can kind of see, so intellectual stimulation, learning something new, inspiration, these quite, um, and academic and professional reasons, these quite intellectual um, reasons, as well as quite introspective reasons. So reflection and peace and quiet, they're all quite high for the visual arts attendees compared with the wider data set. Whereas escape, things to do with children and family and entertainment and celebrating special occasions, that's all reported um, much less, which I found quite interesting. Um, next slide is about the results from the uh, survey methods. So how do survey methods impact a net promoter, like recommending score and quality scores? Um, so it's quite hard to uh, visualize this because, we, I don't, which is, is kind of a good problem because lots of people answer like really um, quite high, like nine or 10 for a lot of the, um, for when they say like rate the quality and everything. So that's really nice. But um, so that I could see if there was any variation, I've decided to visualize this like this. So on the top, you see non-visual arts, e-survey, non-visual arts face-to-face. -face, and then on the bottom, you see the results for visual arts, e-survey and visual arts face-to-face. -face. So this is essentially the net promoter and quality scores added together. And then you, this is kind of the percentage of which they're represented. So I've put, um, I've kind of divided it into five groups. So the, the left-hand side bar in each vis visualization is uh, scores below eight. And then I've put 8.5, 9, 9.5 and 10 on the right-hand side. So we can see that variation because as I say, a lot of the scores were at the top end. Um, 
Overall, um, like in terms of the findings, I'd say that people are scoring very, very highly for everything. Um, but we do see that there is some differences. So non-visual arts um, e-survey, the top left chart, that's 60% of people, 60% uh, of the ratings were 10. Whereas for visual arts e-survey, that result is more like 50%. And then for non-visual arts face-to-face, -face, it's slightly lower than with the e-survey, around just, just above 50%. Whereas visual arts face-to-face, -face, it's just above 40%. So overall, there is uh, visual arts are kind of getting less 10 out of 10 scores on these ratings than uh, the non-visual arts. Similarly, with the scores below eight, for non-visual arts, it's it's quite low um, um, across both e-survey and face-to-face, -face, but for both visual arts, um, the, both methods, um, it's about uh, around 20% essentially of, uh, of scores are under eight uh, in total. Um, and then, yeah, just a final word on the methodology. I think this does show that e-surveys do tend to elicit maybe higher like um, I guess responses weighted more towards the positive side whereas face-to-face -face seems to have a bit more variation and, and maybe the scores slightly skewed a bit towards the the, the lower end and um, next final slide please um yeah so that is just a very quick hopefully I've not gone too quick um pit stop tour um but I guess just some thoughts from that I think in terms of I think the motivations uh, findings are really interesting especially what people are kind of wanting to go to visual arts events for I think for my research in particular I'm interested in if that's related to perceptions of what those events that will be like or um yeah and, and any kind of maybe barriers or things like preventing people from thinking those things are entertaining or whether that's just kind of yeah whether that's just kind of okay and that's like that's just a fine motivation for people to have um and I think looking at these two things together it was interesting to see that overall while the, the scores are still very high there is like slightly less um there are slightly lower scores for the quality and uh, likelihood of recommending to a friend for the visual arts. So I guess it's interesting to think if more intellectual and introspective pursuits are kind of uh, leading to to lower ratings overall in that in that sense and how how we deal with that. Um, and then my final reflections on working with the audience agency and my experience and future work. Um, yeah, just to say thank you very much. Everyone at the audience agency has been very nice and it's been really amazing to have all of your very good data and I'm very excited and I'm quite lucky on the PhD as well to have all of that data. Um, in the future, um, yeah, so we've worked together a little bit on um, putting a question into the last wave of the cultural participation monitor. I think that's something I'll be looking at more um, as the PhD goes on. Um, and yeah, just excited to carry on working together um, and hopefully, um, yeah, if anyone has any questions or anything, I think we'll be able to do those later on. Hopefully I haven't gone over or too under. Thank you. <laughs> uh, cheers, Ray. Um, so do you want to dive straight into the next one and then we can pick up questions? Yeah. At the end. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Um, thanks, Ray. That was brilliant. Uh, so, yes, I'm going to talk a little bit about data we have uh, that Ray mentioned from the Cultural Participation Monitor uh, from the last wave, wave nine, uh, in July 2023, that data came in. Uh, and just look at really the attitudes our visual arts audiences have or what we're, what we're seeing. So, yeah, attitudes of attendees at visual arts events. So we asked in the latest wave of the Cultural Participation Monitor um, various statements. Uh, two of those statements were how uh, much people agreed with, uh, with the following two statements. Uh, the first one, uh, I see myself as a creative person. And the second one, art and culture is an important part of who I am. We wanted to get a sense of, you know, what, uh, what was important in people's lives and what was sort of driving potentially their attendance at different events. Uh, so for those who listed in the uh, monitor, 
that they attended any arts or heritage event in the last 12 months. 63% uh, of them uh, said they saw themselves as a creative person and 51% uh, said that art and culture was an important part of who they were. And this was um, very reflective of the overall respondents who um, more people said they saw themselves as a creative person. However, when we look at that for just visual arts attendees, so those who listed that they attended a visual arts event in the last 12 months, uh, firstly, both were much higher. Um, and they were also, and secondly, there was much more similar. So 75% said they saw themselves as a creative person and 74% Said, uh, stated that art agreed or strongly agreed that art and culture was an important part of who they were. So we always, already see that uh, sort of very large difference for visual art, art, arts attendees there. When we look at this across age groups, and this is reflective of all respondents who filled out the survey, uh, we see that younger audiences, age 16 to 24, uh, Again, very uh, a large proportion agree that they see themselves as a creative person, but less, uh, less who say that art and culture is an important part of who they are. And this distribution that we see for those who attended any arts or heritage event in the last 12 months is uh, reflected in all age categories. So we see it uh, seems to be more of a theme of people seeing themselves as a creative person. Um, and for both of these, they reduce across age. So we see less and less agreeing with both statements um, with uh, each age group increasing. Um, and we see this same pattern in attendance for these. So for the overall percentage of those who attended a visual arts event in the last year, 25% uh, were 25 of 16 to 24 year olds attended a visual arts event compared to 17% down of, uh, of 65 or older. And we see this, so we see that degrees across age. And then for any arts or heritage event, uh, we have 90% of 16 to 24 year olds attending uh, down to 74% for 65 or older. So we are seeing very similar trend um, across age but what is I think the really uh, key thing to take away here is that we see this uh, agreement with these two statements being much higher overall for both in those who attended visual arts events in the last 12 months. So if we drill down a little bit more into that uh, we see that so here we've got the percentage of uh, those who've attended visual arts events or any arts event and overall, and also agreeing with both statements. And when we look at this across uh, those age categories, for those who attended a visual arts event in the last 12 months uh, and uh, also strongly agreed with both statements, uh, we see a much more even distribution across ages. And it's also to a much higher level in comparison to those who attended other arts, any arts or heritage event, and then the overall response for, uh, for respondents. So, and which is interesting. So what it really shows is that those who are attending visual arts events uh, specifically, very much are seeing themselves as much more creative people and, and also showing that art and culture is a much more important part of who they are. More people are saying it's important and this, sort of steps away from those age categories because we're seeing this similar distribution across. Um, so showing that it's there are certain um, attitudes of attendees at visual arts that is reflecting that they're very, very culturally engaged audiences uh, and very keen on creativity and, and culture is very important there. What's also interesting here is the distribution uh, between them. So where we see it being much lower in the 65 or older for the overall respondents and any arts or heritage event, we see that difference, uh, though, to the visual arts attendees in 65 or older much higher. So we see a 23% increase between those. Um, again, so we're sort of uh, taking away those age categories and really seeing that there is these important aspects. Uh, and I think this really reflects well on what Ray was saying in this sort of um, intellectual engagement, wanting to learn something new, kind of really diving down. It's, it's helping to see what these um, preferences are of these attendees. But of course, there is an increase in all age groups here. Um, that being said, there's still 
a difference between uh, <laughs> ages. So we see 66% of visual arts attendees under the age of 45 agreeing to both statements versus 57% of those aged over 45. But this is a much, uh, this is a decreased difference to what we're seeing for just any arts event and the overall uh, proportion um, agreeing with these statements. And then just to talk a little bit more about other attitudes of uh, the visual arts attendees. So again, here's a, uh, a few more statements we asked uh, in the cultural participation monitor um, as to their agreement level. First off, we looked at, asked them uh, whether they preferred cultural events that have familiar content, whether they preferred to see something different to what they've seen before, and um, if they liked cultures that referred back to earlier times and styles. For the first one on familiar content, we have 38% of visual arts attendees agreeing. And this was the same percentage as the overall respondents. So there was no sort of difference there. However, when we, the second statement, whether they wanted to see, they preferred to see something different to what they've seen before, this was actually a 9% increase um, from 65% uh, of the overall respondents. We see 74% actually wanting to see something different to what they've seen before. And again, with the third statement there saying that culture refers back to earlier times and styles, we also see an increase of 7% from the overall respondents at 63%. So really, again, showing that uh, these visual arts attendees uh, seem to be very culturally engaged audience and also that they, they want to be seeing different things, learning new things, um, but they also want that novelty um, aspect to what they're doing and seeing. Um, and that was sort of a, a very interesting difference there between the um, overall respondents and these visual arts attendees. When we looked, we also asked about participation, whether they wanted to pr prefer to watch without taking part or to be an active part, or if they preferred to be an active participant rather than a passive audience. Um, and here there was a slight increase, but not um, as significant. We saw 63% um, uh, versus 61% for the overall respondents and 67% here versus 59% uh, uh, for the overall respondents. So there is a slight increase in, oh, sorry, got that wrong. 67% um, for <laughs> the visual arts attendees versus 65% for overall respondents, 30% for to be an active participant versus 26% for the overall respondents. So we see a slight increase here, but it is not uh, too different to what we're seeing from uh, all other respondents for other arts events. Um, this is uh, quite a common theme uh, of how much people want to be able to participate in events or not. Um, then finally, we also asked whether people preferred going with people of similar age. And you can see a very similar distribution here. 39% agreed, 36% disagreed very similar and this was uh, very close to overall respondents as well and didn't change too much. Um, yeah, so overall really just wanted to give a uh, picture of what the sort of um, attitudes of those who are specifically attending visual arts are in a sense that, you know, there is strong ties with seeing themselves um, as a creative person and art and culture being very important as to what they're doing and this need to see something different and uh, learn new things and refer back to this earlier times in culture, which again, I think it leads to that nice um, uh, aspects that was reflected quite well in what Ray was talking about with intellectual engagement and uh, seeing the sort of novelty in what the, the types of events they're attending. Um, to give a, yes, a little bit of background on that. Uh, Yes, um, well, Ollie, yeah, if, is going to take the response then. I don't know if you'd like to add anything to that. Um, I'll, I'll try and add a little bit, but not too much, given that I'm sure lots of other people have, have things they want to say, comment, ask, etc. Um, but it strikes me, I mean, I found these quite interesting looking at them together, and it's partly because we're often when looking at visual arts audiences, so I, I, I started out working at an art gallery, um, but you often have, you know, you do surveys to the public and then you're sort of, that's, that's what you've got. But, um, but here we've got a, a nice blending of sort of audience surveys plus population surveys, which we can then filter for people who say they attend. So we've got these two different angles of coming in on the same kind of topics. 
and getting them through their both are quite interesting related responses and of course different methodologies which i think is also fascinating and something of relief that they don't give totally different answers albeit there's some really interesting nuance there about actually maybe i think we've often thought that if you ask people survey questions face to face there's a risk that they're just going to be too polite to give you a really blunt answer um, and you end up getting an artificially high response whereas you give them an e-survey they can take it away and they can say what they really think um but actually it turns out that's not really exactly what's going on and although they're both coming back with pretty, pretty similar answers overall it's kind of interesting when you get more of a spread from that kind of more engaged conversation from a face-to-face -face survey so i think that was something i kind of found quite an interesting reflection um but it also touches on this idea that the the type of engagement the nature of the engagement and what people um, are looking for um makes a difference to how they actually react and respond to it so there's this question about well, if people are coming to visual arts looking critically for a kind of intellectual engagement with it then perhaps then when they engage with surveys and responses around it but also been engaged with those differently as well um and that's i mean that's a, a massive can of worms that we just need to sort of think about and address but um but i think it's quite an interesting interesting question and i certainly think it encourages us away away from a sort of a naive reading of this art form is obviously satisfying even more than that one because it gets a higher average score um which is absolutely not a thing what we've been saying here um and i guess it flags the benefit of unbundling certain types of art forms and things that often get put in the same box but actually people go to particular things in particular circumstances looking at particular things and so understanding those kind of peer groups and contexts becomes quite important um so there's that bit um the role of identity i think is quite interesting so i mean ella showed the kind of that there was a higher engagement with the arts in general but particularly the one about it being an important part of who they are is higher for visual arts. I think that's kind of quite an interesting, interesting strand to kind of maybe think about a little bit more. Um, and the other thing I thought maybe just to touch on, which is another sort of methodological thing, um, is you'll notice that when Ella was going through those last questions, there were sets of questions that all kind of sort of nibbled away at the same kind of topic, albeit from different directions. So there's kind of do you like things that are familiar? Would you like things that are different? Do you like things that aren't back? So what we've been trying to do with those is try and get a sort of more rounded picture of people's thoughts. So even though we're using quite a sort of, um, you know, quite a quantitative instrument, because by using it in those different ways, you can start to see, you know, some people are agreeing to all of these or just some of these, or actually things you might think that would be opposites can go hand in hand. So people like stuff that's different and also the hardest back. Because really what's driving that is a kind of engagement with the art form and it's a knowledge about what it is and what it isn't and what it could be. And um, so I think that was just something interesting to note that once you start to take that kind of approach, you get a slightly different um, set of insights. So yeah, so that's some some initial thoughts. 